God is love. How can there be love? What do you mean God is love? What do you mean by the statement? Do you, do you mean God is loving? Because that is also in the Quran. Yes. Al Wudud, one of the names of Allah, is the most loving. So, if what God, do you understand by this terminology? God, God is love. Loving. Let's say loving. Is he only loving? And many other things as well. Okay. Including justice, he, just and just. He, he basically expresses his love. Let, let it, let it, um, let it, let's capture all this because yes. God cannot be described in terms, right? Because it's unlimited. No, no, no. no. We, we cannot understand God, all of God. No. Yes, I, I agree with you. However, we understand about God what He has already revealed to us. So if God tells us that He doesn't die, if God tells us that He's all knowing, if God tells us that He's, he's, he's Almighty, and that He's merciful, and that He's loving, and He's also just, and He also expresses His wrath, all these things we know about God from God. But if I were to say something about God which He hasn't revealed to me, then I would be, in a way, stepping beyond what God has already yeah, but the point of our saying to make is that me, yes. if you are all these things, say again? if you are all these things, and I, I agree, God is one person, one is nature, one, is one being. Three, it depends how you define the terms, right? But how can God be loving and just be alone? Just be alone. In the beginning of the world, God was already loving. So I'm saying, oh, I see. what are you saying? So Spirit. you're trying to say he needs someone to love. He needs to have a sense of Plural, like pluralism or being more than one why? in some way. Why? In order to love, you need somebody else. these feelings to be somehow possible. Okay, let me ask you this. God is also just. Yes. Whom did he express his justice upon when he was alone? His three characters, oh. his three natures. So he was doing justice with the father, uh, with the spirit and the uh, It was a perfect union. No, no, I'm asking you, what justice did he do with them? Because they're also God according to you. What? what? Okay, I can understand he showed his love to them. But then if he's also vengeful, he's also just. Was he showing his vengeance to them as well and his justice? I'm not because sure what do you need to do? Sure. You need to be consistent in your approach. Because there are people like Godwin who uses his argument. He's a well-known character here. Yes, He says that the only way God can be loving is if there are others along with him that he can express his love to. But what about his other attributes? Like his vengeance, yes? like, his, uh, like his justice, like his mercy. And these things also need other people. I think that is really, really... You're try what you're trying to do, you're trying to limit God. That in order for God to be loving, He needs another person for that to love. Not necessarily. You know, I can actually love, yes, someone that I've never met. Yes, I can... I can. But you know that He exists. Yeah, you... Did God know the future? Did God know the future? Yes. So, did He know you were going to exist? Yes. Could He have loved you before He created anything? Yes. There you go. Solves the present, isn't it? Quite simple. Yes, you're making good arguments. Because these things are something that... You know what I feel like? Many Christians are using some way to interpret the Trinity into this one God. When God has expressly told you in the, in the commandment, in the first commandment, both Moses and Jesus told you, Moses in Deuteronomy 6.4, uh, Jesus in Matthew 12, 29, both of them told you that here, O Israel, your Lord God is one. At no point did they ever advocate three in one. Only one, yes. So stop there, that's it. You don't have to add anything to it.